This is the Dryer Exhaust Duct Performance Standard presented by NATCA. The purpose of this video is to visually demonstrate how the Dryer Exhaust Duct Performance Test is actually performed in the field utilizing today's technology that we've created for you. In section 1.1 of the Dryer Exhaust Duct Performance Standard, you'll see that the pre-test verification ensures or even assumes that the dryer exhaust duct itself has been professionally cleaned prior to performing this test. Once we know that the dryer exhaust duct has been cleaned, you are first want to make sure that the dryer is pulled back from the wall. When cleaning the dryer exhaust duct, be sure to take note of how many sections of rods are being used to clean the system. In our example, our rods were 5 foot long each. We also encountered hard elbows that each account for a 5 foot code run penalty. So to do the math, our three 5 foot rods plus our two hard elbows gives us a total developed run length of 25 feet. To properly perform the test, be sure you have the following tools readily available. A magnahelic gauge or digital manometer, a vane anemometer to measure airflow velocity at the termination point, along with a blower fan built to NATCA specifications to actually generate airflow through the dryer exhaust duct system. In today's example, we use a pre-built device that encompasses both the magnahelic gauge, transition duct, tap fitting, and tubing all used to actually get the correct performance measurement for back pressure. If you built your own system, be sure that the transition duct has a tap fitting in it along with tubing to connect your magnahelic gauge to identify the proper back pressure readings in that system. Once it's been connected, we can now turn on or activate the actual dryer exhaust blower to generate airflow through the dryer exhaust duct. Once you've activated the device, take a look at the magnahelic gauge and actually record the amount of back pressure in that system now that the dryer exhaust is clean. Once you're at the termination point, use the vane anemometer in multiple parts of that 4-inch duct to measure the maximum airflow velocity readings found in that system. Finally, compare and contrast the information you've recorded to the table's data provided and determine if that system you're working on is passing or failing the minimum requirements to be acceptable for dryer venting. To summarize today's test, we vented our dryer through the roof and had a total developed run length of 25 feet. The back pressure once the dryer was cleaned was 0.74 water column inches and featured 1,772 feet per minute of airflow velocity measured at the rooftop termination. When looking at this compared to our rooftop venting table in the standard, this system passed. If the system fails, this may be an opportunity for your company to offer additional solutions to maximize the dryer exhaust duct performance efficiency for the home you're working on. Consider offering a more efficient roof or sidewall termination, or ensure that all concealed ductwork is made of rigid metal. Lastly, if you're able to, shorten the run length by using smooth 90 degree elbows. For more information on the dryer exhaust duct performance standard presented by NATCA, please visit natca.com today.